Hello, it's Ruby, and today I'm going to be reviewing overhyped study products. There are so many products which people in the study community, especially over on Instagram, will rave about. And even though people don't necessarily call them essential, there is a tendency for us to think that they are essentials and treat them like, like they are essentials because so many study accounts have them, etc. I definitely do have a lot of those overhyped study products and I just wanted to give you a very honest review of all of the ones that I do have. Before we start this video, I'm so excited to announce that I'm releasing another yearly planner this year. I've basically designed my dream planner, um, filled it with unique spreads and daily planning sheets. And I know I'm biased, but I genuinely think this is the best planner out there and I've used mine pretty much every day this year. It will launch on Tuesday the 30th of November and I'm just so excited to share it with you. So we're going to start with one of my favorite products, which is mild liners. I've been using them for about six years now and I would really recommend them. I would not say that these are overhyped. They're more expensive than other highlighters, but I think they're pretty affordable for what they are. I think it's good value for money, mainly because this is a dual tip pen. So on one side you have a highlighter and on the other you have a marker pen. The best thing about these is the colors. They are mild colors um, and all of them are just so, so pretty. I love these. It's also just an aesthetic design. I think these pens are very nice on some desk then for cons there is no grip on the pen secondly the felt tip does wear down quite quickly um like more quickly than other felt tips next white lines paper I've spoken about a lot in the study community a couple of years ago and really i think that's for good reason if anything i would say that this is underhyped i think it's incredible paper and I would highly recommend it. This paper is light gray with white lines as opposed to like white with gray lines. And it genuinely just is a nicer kind of paper to write on. Your notes and writing show up more clearly in compare because of the white lines. So it just kind of, your notes just end up looking nicer. The paper is also very reasonably priced, like a lot more reasonably priced than you'd expect. Another of the things I love is that you can scan your notes into the app and then remove the background so you can store all of your notes digitally. If I've written handwritten notes, I always make sure that they're stored digitally as well because I really don't like the idea of accidentally losing them. Just for cons, I would say I don't really like the lined one. I prefer the dotted or grid, but genuinely that's just personal preference. So when I asked on Instagram which overhyped products you wanted me to talk about, lots and lots of people mentioned Remarkable, which is a tablet like an iPad, but the screen is made to resemble real paper, so when you're writing on it, it's supposed to feel like you're writing on real paper. Remarkable has been very, very, very kind in sending me their Remarkable 2 tablet to try, and so I'm going to be trying for the first time now. The first thing I will say is that this is very expensive, like, very expensive. It's the same price as an iPad, but its only feature is for writing, like with an iPad you can also download apps, listen to music, watch television and things. And just on the offset of that, I would say that it makes more sense to buy an iPad as a student. But I am really excited to try this and let's have a look. Excuse the blanket, it is really really cold in our university house at the moment. Let's... So we've got a little instruction booklet here and then this is the actual tablet. I mean, I'd say it's maybe a little bit heavier than my iPad. So I've just set it up and I love the design of this so much. Look as well, this case is magnetic. Whoa. That is really like writing on paper, gosh. This does feel genuinely a lot like writing on paper. So I've been using the tablet for a couple of days now and I genuinely love it more and more. My first instinct, I've got to say, I did think it was very overhyped. Like, yes, I thought it was cool when I first wrote with it and I was like, oh yeah, well, this really resembles writing on paper. But it's taken me using it for a couple of days to actually realise how much I do love it. And I've been using it so much over the last few days for planning my essays and doing my maps. But is it overhyped? I'm going to run through the pros and cons. First of all, pros. The big one is it actually does feel like writing on paper. I'm going to talk about the paper-like screen protector in this video and... I found that that didn't resemble writing on paper, whereas this actually does. The screen on the Remarkable is also like the Kindle, so it doesn't have a glare, so you could use it in direct sunlight. I think one of my favorite things about it, and this is a really massive proof if you're using it for studying, is that there are no notifications. Yes, an iPad is great because it's got loads of other features other than just being able to write on it, but actually with this, like I've really enjoyed the simplicity of it and 
the fact that I'm not getting notifications coming through, I don't have distractions from other apps and websites. It's literally just the paper. It's like you're working from a notebook. One of the things I also love is it syncs automatically with your laptop. As soon as you've written something up on your Remarkable, you'll be able to access it on your laptop and download it as a PDF. And then finally, it works the other way. So you can export files, but also you can import files. So if you've got a reading that you want to read, um, you can just drag it into the desktop app and then it will appear on your remarkable i just think it's so 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 cool honestly i'm loving using it but i will run through some cons as well because there are some cons now the number one con is of course that this is very expensive it's the same price as the ipad whereas an ipad could be used as an alternative to a laptop because you can attach like a keyboard you can type things up the remarkable can only be used as a notebook and so it is harder to justify that really 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 steep price point so yes crazily expensive that is the number one downside um, so it's very good at what it does like resembling a notebook but it also means that there are some things where it is lacking like it does lag quite a lot so when you're like going between documents it does take a moment to load it's a bit like the kindle in that regard um i find the same thing with my kindle and that can be annoying i mean i haven't found it really to be an issue potentially you might also find it frustrating that you've got to use the desktop version to like access all of the settings and change settings and then finally it is all in black and white which might be a complete game changer for you because some people really like to use color when they're highlighting and annotating and with the ipad you can you have like an unlimited number of colors that you can highlight with whereas this is only black and white Next Next, the iPad and Apple Pencils. So I bought this iPad in 2018 when I started university and this is just the original iPad, not the iPad Pro. Honestly, I do not understand why so many people rave about the iPad Pro. I find that this does everything I would need an iPad to do as a student. Like it's compatible with the Apple Pencil, which I think is the most important thing. And the price difference is absolutely massive between the iPad and the iPad Pro. My dad has the Pro and he let me try it out for a few days. Genuinely, there was nothing that the iPad Pro did that I thought was better than the iPad um, in terms of functionality for students. An iPad can be a useful companion for studying. It's lighter than a laptop, which is a very big bonus. Uh, so if you like to study on the go, you have lots of classes on campus. And there are so many ways that a tablet does come in useful for studying. Um, I can film a whole video on how I use my tablet for studying. I wouldn't say it's necessary. If you have a laptop, then you definitely don't need a tablet. But if you like handwriting your notes, then an iPad or another tablet can be a useful companion. I will say though that I don't think the iPad does anything in particular which another tablet with a compatible pencil couldn't do. It just depends on what you're using it for. If you're just using it for annotating readings and writing up handwritten notes, I think any of the tablets kind of suffice. And then just for cons, the lack of resistance does make it kind of awkward to write on the glass screen. So that leads us perfectly into Paperlike, which is a screen protector, which is supposed to make it feel like you're writing on paper when using your iPad. So there are so many people who rave about the Paperlike screen protector and say it's one of the best things they ever bought. But I really did not understand the hype. In fact, I actually have now taken it off. Um, I took it off a couple of days ago. I wanted to give it a fair run and use it for a little while, but I genuinely just think that the cons outweigh the pros and I would say don't waste your money on this because um, it is 30 pounds, which is expensive for a screen protector, especially when there are quite a few downsides. Okay, so I'm gonna start with the pros. It does kind of feel like writing on paper. It adds a kind of resistance to the screen. So the iPad has a glass screen and this just adds a kind of gauze to it. So it um, feels a little bit more like paper. It's nowhere near as good as the Remarkable, but then that is to be expected because of the big price difference. But I would only recommend it if you were going to exclusively be using your iPad for taking notes and not anything else, um, because there are two major cons. Number one, it drastically reduces the screen quality. I've tried to show you in this clip by putting my dad's iPad next to my iPad. I'm not sure if you can tell, but the screen quality is so much worse because of that gauze that it's added to the screen. It's got a really grainy effect and I saw a notable difference as soon as I put this screen protector on. I think one of the things you do pay for is the screen quality and yet the screen protector drastically reduces that. The other thing is the Apple Pencil tip. Lots of people say that it will wear down the Apple Pencil tip over time. After a certain length of time, you'll have to replace the tip, which is unnecessary and it's definitely a design flaw. Admittedly, I haven't had this happen to me, so I don't know if it is really a problem, but then admittedly, I haven't been using it that much. 
Crayola super tips are often spoken about as calligraphy pens online. I think they're good for headings. I don't think they work particularly well as brush pens, but because you can draw both thick and thin lines with these pens, if you're just getting into calligraphy, I think they could be a good choice because Crayola super tips are very affordable. And with that said, let's go on to Tombow brush pens. So Tombow markers are actually rivaled with the mild liners for me. Like mild liners have always been my favorite highlighters, but recently I've been swaying more towards Tombows. These are again a dual tip pen. So on one side, you've got a very, very fine felt tip nib. And on the other side, you've got a brush pen. The reason why I'd say these are maybe slightly better than the mild liner is because it technically has three functions. You can use it as a felt tip pen, this is very very thin and you can use it for writing notes you can use it as a brush pen but you can also use it as a highlighter like the mild liners this comes in loads of really nice colors and also a greater color selection the only con i can think of is that they are quite long like they're abnormally long pens and so they don't always fit in pencil cases next muji pens okay these pens are so overhyped oh my goodness i don't understand why people rave about them so much Yes, pros. They come in nice colours and it is a nice design. Nice, It does look very nice, but they are such impractical pens, so uncomfortable to write with. And I also find that the nib on the pen twists when you're writing with it. If you really, really love the colours, I'd recommend buying the refills and then putting it in a different pen, like the Zebra Sarasa casing, which is a lot more comfortable. I would 100% say that you're much better off buying the Zebra Sarasa 0.5 nib pens than the Muji pens, much more comfortable. Some of the light colors are slightly harder to write with, so I would recommend going for the darker colors, but the yellow is an exception. This one actually writes really, really nicely. It's a really nice yellow color, like kind of mustard yellow. These are the Stabilo fine liners. Pros, I really like that there are loads of colors, so it's good for color coding notes. But I would say that gel pens, like things like the Zebra Sarasas, are better. The main reason for this is they do bleed through. So at the end of a line, you'll kind of get this weird inky dot. I also just think it's easier to write with a gel pen than a fine liner tip because of the square tip of the fine liner. They can be slightly harder to write with depending on how you write. Next, the Fjallraven Konkan. This is spoken about so much online. You've probably seen this bag everywhere. I got this one, which is the 13 inch frost green Konkan back right before I started university, the summer of 2018. And I used it pretty much every single day until this September when I bought the 15 inch laptop Konkan in frost green. I still use this maybe twice a week and then I use this the other five days a week. And the reason I went for the bigger one is because the smaller one isn't designed to carry a laptop. It isn't very comfortable carrying your laptop in the 13 inch bag. If you're buying a Konkan as a university bag and you do intend on bringing your laptop with you, I would really recommend going for the laptop Konkan. As you can see, the laptop compartment has some padding and so it protects your laptop. If you are just using the bag for notebooks and pens or maybe a tablet, then the 13 inch is a really, really good choice. It's also got padded straps, which absorb some of the weight of the bag. So it's actually a lot more comfortable to hold. So first for pros, it is waterproof, ergonomically designed, very comfortable. And I really just like the appearance of it. It's also a sustainable bag to buy because it is made to last for a long time. So the idea is that you buy one as opposed to replacing your bag every few years, which is obviously better in the long term. And then for cons, it doesn't have many pockets. It's only got this one and the main one, and then the laptop sleeve if you've got the laptop bag. And I do like having a lot of pockets. And then finally, it does kind of lose its shape, as you can see, so it's like started to dip. I personally think a laptop is a very good purchase for students. It's the one thing I would tentatively call an essential because it will make research and essay writing so much easier. And I literally use mine every single day for multiple hours a day. However, the big question is whether the MacBook is better than other laptops. So I can't provide an unbiased review of this laptop because I've only ever used Apple laptops, but I can tell you whether I would recommend a MacBook Pro for students. So the short answer is that the MacBook probably doesn't do anything that another laptop doesn't do. I personally do all of my studying on Notion, Google Drive, and occasionally pages or like a PDF editor. So as long as I can connect to the internet and download files, a laptop should do everything I'd want it to do as a student. But there are some specific pros and cons, I think, when it comes to the MacBook. So pros, the Mac has an easy to use interface. I just enjoy the interface of Apple. I think it's very clear, uncluttered, 
very intuitive and easy to use. So for example, when you screenshot something, you can just drag it into your document. It will come up and you can just drag it into your document, which is something which Windows doesn't do. Also, if you have an iPhone, you've got the ease of airdrop and being able to transfer easily between devices. So for example, if on my phone, I take a picture of a lecture slide, a passage in a library book, I can easily just airdrop and send that to my laptop. But I would say all of this is just personal preference and me liking the interface. So for cons, I wouldn't say it's heavy, like it is a lightweight laptop, but there are lighter laptops. Annoyingly also, the new Macs have only got USB-C ports as opposed to USB-A ports. You have to end up buying like an adapter for the USB ports, which is just an additional expense, which is a little frustrating. And then finally, the thing I will say is, so I use a MacBook Pro, but I wouldn't probably recommend a MacBook Pro for students. I don't think there's anything a MacBook Pro can do that the MacBook Air can't do if you're using it for studying. The reason that I've got the MacBook Pro is for editing and like handling large video files, etc. If I didn't have a YouTube channel and I didn't edit videos, then I wouldn't have a MacBook Pro. And then finally, Beats wireless headphones. I've got the Beats Solo 3 wireless headphones and I love these headphones. I use them every single day and I'm really, really glad that I bought them. Again, these headphones are quite pricey. Oh my gosh, instantly I can't hear anything. But they do often go on sale, so I waited until these were 40% off before purchasing them. So, pros, they are noise cancelling and they are very, very good noise cancelling headphones. And I genuinely can't hear anything when these are on and playing music. And my parents always joke, because I'll come into my room when I'm studying and I won't even hear them come in because these are such good noise cancelling headphones. The great thing is though, if you're wearing them when you're out and about, you can turn off the noise cancelling, which just keeps you safer on roads, etc. Secondly, great audio quality. I tried out so many other headphones before buying these ones. The audio quality on these I thought was the best. I love that they fold up, so they're easier to um, bring around with you, which is a change from the headphones which I had before. They've also got a very good battery life. And also they are comfortable because of the padding. For cons though, if you leave them open, they won't turn off automatically. On quite a few occasions, I've forgotten to close them and the battery has drained. And also they can can get uncomfy and like put a pressure on your ears and um, give you a bit of a headache if you wear them for over like two hours at a time. So thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed watching it and I hope it was in some way helpful. Remember that none of these things are essentials for students. These tools can help you study they are not essential. I just wanted to give some honest reviews of these products because I know that they are spoken about a lot and also just to tag on to the end of this video, as I mentioned at the beginning, I am releasing a yearly planner again this year. Um, I released an academic planner in September. This one's from January to December and the spreads are slightly more lifestyle focused, but the daily planning sheets are pretty much identical to the ones in the academic planner and actually of the academic planner and the yearly planner i personally prefer the yearly planner so this will be available on tuesday the 30th this will cost 16 pounds and be available on my website bumpkin productivity so to celebrate the launch of the yearly planner i'm actually going to be hosting a giveaway where you can win every product that we are currently selling on pumpkin productivity the notebook which is like a dotted notebook the timetable which is also coming out on the 30th of november the mini master to-do list the master to-do list the original study planner mina's meal planner the kindness journal and the kindness pin. To enter, all you've got to do is leave a comment down below sharing your number one main motivation for studying. Sorry for the self promo there, but this is a kind of station related video, so I thought I would just mention it. Um, and thank you as always for giving me the opportunity to be able to share these products with you because um, it's been a dream of mine since I was very, very young to design stationery. Anyway, thank you again for watching, and I hope that you have a productive week. Bye.